Hello and welcome back to another mod review. Today I'm going to be covering the first area in Arch Thrones, the War Torn Village. The reason I am only covering the War Torn Village is because there is a balance patch in the works, and this and the Cathedral of the Deep will likely be the only areas unaffected. In addition to my own thoughts, I have the notes of two Dark Souls challenge runners, Bob Lord and Yaviz. As an introduction to the mod, Arch Thrones is a comprehensive overhaul for Dark Souls 3, offering a retelling of the Dark Souls universe with its own lore and enriched gameplay. It's inspired by a Demon Souls level structure, introduces new enemies, bosses, armors, weapons, and spells, like most overhauls. Players can explore non-linear progression through various thrones at their own pace, with new combat mechanics such as guard counters and perfect blocking. The mod features 17 new boss fights, technically I counted 18, new NPCs with fully voiced dialogue, and side quests for an immersive experience. It presents five reimagined worlds drawing inspiration from the From Software mythos, inviting players to relive iconic areas and encounter both familiar and new characters. For the tutorial area and the Nexus, I don't really have any complaints. The tutorial is short, but since it's an overhaul of a game most people who would play it have 500 hours in or more, it doesn't really need to be that elaborate. The Demon Vanguard is a good fight for what it is. There's no way to kill him, and you have to die to him to progress. Trade Demon as a base moveset for it was a good touch, calling back to DS and DS1, and it's a fight that isn't often reused in overhaul mods. Bob Lord did have a comment on the Phase 2 Lava and any AoE saying Phase 2 Lava spew attack is inconsistent. It's always hard to tell where the puddles are going to land and I feel like it's a gamble if I'm going to get hit. And the explosion slash VFX sound when you kill the boss could be a bit bigger. It felt weak slash cheap when I was on the other side of the arena and the boss and died to it. The Nexus is fine. It's Firelink Shrine but made pretty. I'm, as I'm not really a fan of the vanilla Firelink, I don't much care for it, and I think the more DES filling hub would fit the mod better. That said, something I missed that Bob Lord pointed out was that everyone he has talked to seems to miss the Bone Shard from Thomas in the Nexus. We both missed the Bone Shard, which is a really critical piece of healing, and as I accidentally killed him with a wall trying to see what his chest is, I will now have to spawn it in with C to get it. Thomas also just doesn't really serve a purpose as a vendor, since carry weight doesn't exist outside of DES, so there's no real point in interacting with him. On to the actual focus of the video, which is the War Torn Village itself. For context, it only took me an hour and a half to complete everything here, which is still impressive for one-fifth of a demo of a mod. War Torn Village is more or less a vanilla undead settlement with a standard overhaul flair, so unlike the three of the other areas, it isn't completely new. Starting in the back, the undead settlement is a nice touch since all the D DS3 overhauls I'm aware of don't change progression like this. I do wish ma they made the first bond for a little bit more idiot proof because I did miss it for almost all of my time playing through the level. Entering the level, there is some shadow flickering, which I don't know if this is just the mod itself or DS3's lighting system being on its last legs, but it didn't really happen much, so it's not that big of a deal. Starting off with a winged knight, fighting a Lothric knight is a cool detail because in the vanilla game, and in this mod, the angelic faith in Lothric itself is in a civil war, but in vanilla we don't ever see them fighting, to my knowledge, just the aftermath. Now that I think about it, it is pretty weird because the Winged Knights and Lothric Knights are in pretty close proximity to each other in several entrances, and according to the lore, should be fighting. Going to the left, you can find some Corvians that now support Angelic Wings and are wearing the blue of the Angelic Faith. It looks much better than the drab grayscale of the vanilla game, and something I really like about the DS3 overhauls. All of them, including Cinders since they bring color to the piss-filtered grayscale Lothric. Bringing back the Vitalista from Elden Ring is a nice thought, but I hate where they put them. Leading up to the shortcut where the Cursed Rod of Greatwood would be is a really bad spot because it has a range that makes going up the stairs damaging unless you kill the Ballista Operator each time. 
The cover they did provide going up to it was nice though, and something I wish Elden Ring had done more of. Giving the Lothric Knights a heavy tank knight is a nice gameplay mix-up, especially because they are different from the Wing Knights, so it's not a direct reskin, which most overall mods do. Dropping down to where the bonfire would be doesn't have much change outside of the bonfire not being there, and it feels more like a missed opportunity for something better outside of a mostly vanilla spot. The side path where you normally go to meet the get the Mound Maker's Covenant, getting an enemy and map overhaul is great, although it's still vanilla enough where I wonder if some players wouldn't explore it all the way. Having a Pussa Man and those half form hollows that are lurking cathedral is nice to flush out the area a bit, especially with the reskin Puss monsters they are now. And a bridge to where the fire vanilla Fire Demon fight happens is a really good idea that I wish FromSoft did. It just feels so natural, and at least in vanilla, it would fit the progression of the area better. The Puss Ridden Beast is a nice boss fight since the level preceding it is focused on abyssal enemies, and the fight itself being taken from Bloodborne is a nice touch as Bloodborne's combat loop is much faster paced and more sporadic compared to the Souls games. Being based on Lawrence, the first Hikar, it's a very aggressive boss and it fits an abyssal enemy, although it does have some problems. In Phase 2, the Curse Puddle of the effects are really hard to see and the spray attack feels like it has too wide of an angle. It's hard to get past as it tracks you really hard up close. The run back to the boss is fine in my opinion. You can run past everything without getting hit, and if you do kill everything, it isn't a bunch of hard enemies save the Puss of Man, which can be trivialized with a firebomb just like in the vanilla game. Bob Lord disagrees though. For his run, he fought everything at SL1, and he said this run back sucks. Too many enemies that can very easily take your Estus scout down by the time you get to the boss. Going straight from the bonfire where the Thrall with the Flamberge ambushes you in vanilla leads you back to where the Estus shard normally is and a group of hollows. Instead of hollows you have Lothric knights fighting each other, again pointing to the fact that they're in a civil war. Making the winged Lothric knights visually different is a good change from the base game given that the only difference in the base game is the blue tabard. Having different shields and armor really does make a difference because you feel like you're fighting a different faction. Progressing back to where in vanilla the start of the level would be doesn't offer much difference except for at the very end where there is a new boss fight. The Angelic Siege Golem mashes together the Iron Golem for Dark Souls 1 and the Tower Knight from Demon Souls. And it actually makes for a really fun boss fight. Having a gimmick like the fights that it is inspired by, it rewards aggression, but also updates the boss to work with a modern Souls game. Which is a big problem if you're just porting in older bosses like this. It has more AoEs, faster attacks, and keep off orbs as I like to call them. That will do well to break up the fight without being spammy. The Phase 2 teleportation into Ground Slam is reminiscent of the Lorian Teleport Slam and is dodgeable in the same way. Because of the similarity of the moves, I am curious if the Perseverance weapon art has the same property it does in the Lorient fight, which is actually giving iframes instead of giving super armor. I'm not really sure why that happens, but beating the boss nets its soul and Havel's ring can be picked up behind it. The new NPC, Lancel, can be found before the fight and his quest has you get invaded back at the start of Warborn Village. Finishing the fight gets you some Angel Feathers, and completing the quest gets you the Cleric Knight set. Progressing through the level like it's vanilla now, the standard path has you fight a Lothric Winged Knight as you enter the shack where you normally find Estes Soup. Going through we'll see you ambushed by a Twin Axe Winged Knight, which is in such a cramped area is a pain to deal with. I don't really like the placement of it, but if you had to put a Winged Knight I'd rather have it ambush you there than somewhere else down in the level. After you get to the main street, you can get sniped by a new ballista, which in its current location gives more reason to just skip that portion by going down the side route. Unlocking the shortcut where the uh, Kestis normally are is very important because there is not a bonfire in its vanilla location. The catacombs are mostly untouched save the new area they created and the boss at the end of it. They did also add Lothric Knights towards the end of the catacombs though. Omen of the Eclipse is an optional boss and doesn't drop anything significant currently. It's just a reskin Godfrey Phrase 1, and honestly despite using 
Power Saiyan straight swords. I didn't miss the jumping attacks. I would have otherwise abused an Elden Ring. Phase 2 is a little controversial from what I hear from people, since it's a reskin of the Ulcerated Tree Spirit, which is a boss many people hate. You know, I'm pretty indifferent towards the fight in Elden Ring, and my opinion of it, the mod, of it in the mod doesn't change. However, I like that they restored the cut concept from DS3. For those who don't know, the Ulcerated Tree Spirit was intended to be in DS3, and was cut at some point early in development based off some pre-release images. Progressing onward to where Hodrick would invade you, and to where the Curse Rider Great Wood would be, they changed the Footman for a Lothic Winged Knight, added a Winged Knight as an ambush, to end the Hollow Workers with the Hollows from the Cathedral of the Deep. The boss that replaced Curse Rider Great Wood is the Angel of Gertrude, which mixes a Crucible Knight and some attacks from a Clean Rot Knight. I liked the Crucible fight, and I really enjoyed the fight as it felt really well balanced. They included an NPC for it, and unfortunately it has to be the dumbest NPC I've ever fought with. It spent half the fight standing in the same spot and blocking, and the AI definitely needs some work there. Afterwards, you get to see Gertrude for the first time in the game, which doesn't actually do anything as far as I could tell, and I assume they'll add more here in the full release. In conclusion, while the tutorial area and the Nexus and Arch Zones are generally well designed, there are some notable issues and missed opportunities. Tutorial shortness is understandable given the target audience familiarity with the game, but the execution of the Demon Vanguard fight and some environmental elements could be improved. The Nexus, while visually appealing, lacks meaningful functionality and overlooks important items like the Bone Shard from Thomas. Moving on to the War Torn Village. It offers a mix of familiar and new experiences with the Undead Settlement framework. While the level design and enemy placement showcase creativity, there are areas for improvement, such as clear signaling for the first bonfire location and addressing issues like shadow flicker. The inclusion of lore driven enemy interactions and recent enemies adds depth to the experience, although some encounters, like the Posturing Beast boss fight, may require adjustments for better balance and visibility on attacks. Despite these criticisms, notable highlights include the Angelic Siege Golem boss fight, which effectively blends elements from previous Soulsborne games, while introducing modern gameplay mechanics. Additional content, such as the Angel Gertrude encounter, shows promise, but may require further refinement, particularly regarding NPC behavior and fight dynamics. Overall, while the War Turn Village demonstrates ambition and creativity in reimagining Dark Souls 3, there are areas where fine-tuning and polish could be enhanced the player experience. That with the continued development and community feedback, Archstones has the potential to offer a compelling and immersive journey through the Dark Souls universe.